So today on Marley, we're going deep on box office hit Queen and Slim. It's the feature debut of writer-producer Lena Waithe and director Melina Matsukis. Queen and Slim is a modern-day black Bonnie and Clyde story filled with social commentary about race relations, and it killed it at the box office this past weekend. I saw it last night. I loved it. Brittany, I know you saw it, too. I give it an A+. What would you give it? I'm right there with you. I give it an A+, plus too. I loved the project. I mean, mm. the cinematography, yes. the, the shots, the casting, the acting, the wardrobe, just the overall aesthetic. I mean, the lines, the, the writing. I think Lena Waithe delivered. Uh, Melina Matsukas, she delivered as well. I think it was just an awesome project. But I'm seeing a lot of mixed reviews mm -hmm. from everybody. And honestly, personally, I think that's just what great art does. I mean, I would, I would put this down as iconic work because that's what great art does in my opinion. Yes. It makes you think. It makes you feel. It creates, you know, dialogue at the end of the day. You know, whether it makes you uncomfortable, whether it, it brings you joy, whether it brings you pain, it, it creates dialogue and much needed conversation. And I yes. think Queen and Slim did just that. It inspires debate, but one part of it that I absolutely love that you didn't mention was the love story. It was like an amazing love story. It was so deep and nuanced and complicated, just how I like it. Yeah. And but there was also part of it that was more of a social commentary and a lot of critics saying that there wasn't enough social commentary. What did you think? Well, since I didn't see the movie, I'll say this. I think that it's great. <laughs> let's it <laughs> yeah, let's just put it out there. I, I do think that um, the social commentary of a black couple fighting for their lives and, and having to kill a cop and run and their whole life changes, it's something that I do want to see. And I think that it's important to kind of show uh, these kind of stories of people who are like, I'm not taking this shit anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how it happened. I don't know. I know like there's like a Tinder date or something and that they met from, I guess, like social media or whatever. Right. And maybe love makes you do crazy things. I don't know what Lena <laughs> wrote, but I do know <laughs> that that is something that I, I do want to see. And I think that it's, it's great to see like a Bonnie and Clyde film like starring people who look like us. So. Right, because it starts with a very unremarkable, a bad even Tinder date, and then it unfolds into this epic journey that we go on with them. Do you find it ironic how it starts compared to how it ends? But you didn't see it. I didn't see it, but also I know people were like trying, basically saying, don't compare it to Bonnie and Clyde because they basically were accused of a crime they didn't do, and that's how they ended up going on the run, where Bonnie and Clyde actually was doing something that they knew there was wrong, and obviously in the end, them, you know, their 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 time, so it's come to a short Bonnie and Clyde. But I definitely think that, you know, it's a form of entertainment. It's definitely escapism. You know, they're a dark-skinned couple. And it's just a form of entertainment. I'm all here for black films. And Lena Waithe is just part of this new wave of, you know, directors. Melina Masukos is a bomb-ass music video mm -hmm. director. So um, I haven't seen the film yet, but I, I know, like, it's, it's an A plus in my book. Mm -hmm. And the film makes you think or think about what would you do if your days were limited, if at any moment yes. you wouldn't be here anymore. Yes. But I feel like the really interesting part about it is how would you love if your time is limited. What does that look like? I know, I keep going back to the love thing. Why are wow. you laughing? <laughs> no, because like, if I find out I have a couple of days, like, you know, left or whatever before I get caught or killed or whatever, like, of course, you know, like, of course I'm in love, like. <laughs> <laughs> love, freaky okay. stuff, like thrill, thrill stuff, like why not? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's you're like, li live it up, like. Yes, <laughs> but speaking of freaky stuff, mm -hmm. the <laughs> sex scene though, <laughs> Yes, say it again. That woo. sex scene, woo child, that's all I can say is <laughs> woo child. They went there, you know. I, there. That was actually one of the highlights of the film for me was that sex scene because the, me ju too. the juxtaposition with, you know, the riot in the scene. And it just made me think of black love being synonymous with black pain. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it, it just yes, was... That that right there. It hit. It hit hard. It hit <laughs> different. And I mean, let's just talk about, you know, their chemistry. Mm -hmm. Daniel and Jody's chemistry was off the charts, okay? Yes. Just them together, it was just, I could watch them all day. And I mean, you hit the nail on the head too, Marley, with the black love. I think Lena did a great job of capturing that, mm -hmm. the essence of black love specifically in that movie. Just the lines. I mean, it hit. It hit different. And I, yeah. I, I would definitely give it a huge thumbs up on mine. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to support. Absolutely. And speaking of the main characters, 
it really surprised me to find out that they are both very, very British with mm -hmm. British accents. And it's such an American film depicting yeah. an American black experience. Did it surprise you to know that the lead actors are British? Um, well, as as an artist myself, I've known I've known Daniel uh, his work since what was like a Black Mirror episode called uh, 100 Million Merits, which is a great commentary on the world today. Whatever. Um, I didn't know that uh, Jody was was British, but um, that's dope. Also, haven't seen the film, but I loved the sex scene. I'll tell you, so the sex scene was great. I don't know what happened in sex scene, but just the existence of the sex scene is just a movie you have to see. Right. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna see if I can just watch it right after we film this. Just that yeah. scene. <laughs> just the scene, just the scene, just the scene. I'm gonna come in late, I'm gonna right. see the scene. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. But I feel like we put a lot of pressure on black movies. Do you feel like black movies by black directors always have to make this grand epic statement? I, def I would say yes and no, because I feel like, you know, when you become a, a creator, you know, like Lena Waithe or Tyler Perry, Spike Lee, you're always going to get picked apart, you know what I'm saying? Because the thing is, black people are monolithic, we all have our different opinions, we can all agree to disagree, but it's like, you know, they're telling it from their, 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 their sides, um, you know, I think people need to realize, you know, people are allowed to have their own ni niches as well, so. Mm -hmm. Do you think this would be counted among the best black films of the year? I definitely think so. It I, has to, right? It has to. Just the amount of debate and conversation that has been sparked just from this project alone is it has to go down as iconic. That's what iconic to me when when it sticks with you. It sticks with me. That that project sticks with me the same way Get Out or Moonlight, you know, stuck with me. It pushed boundaries, it made people uncomfortable, and it made us talk. And yes. I think I think that's what iconic art is all about. Yes. So can we fast forward to the very last scene of the movie? And there's some spoiler Are alerts here. Spoiling it already? Uh, oh, we're oh, going oh, there. a little bit. We're you already told me there was a sex scene. Okay. I didn't know that going. Into, okay. Oh, no, we're going there. <laughs> we have to go to the end because one, yes. so emotional, yes. crying my eyes out. I don't know about you. Yes. Yes. So that last scene to me read like a wedding. Did it seem that way to you? They almost exchanged vows, the words that were being said, and then after she gets shot and he picks her up and literally carries her across that threshold, the symbolic threshold, that was everything. Yes, it was so many hidden messages throughout that movie. It's a lot to unpack. Like, I'm dying yes. to see it again because I feel yes. like there were just so many, so many messages and so many things touched on throughout that project. But I definitely think that last scene, when, he, when she asked, can I be your legacy? And he said, you already are. Mm. I mean, yes, girl. I mean, we t we're talking <laughs> iconic black content right here. We're talking iconic black yeah, content. So, writing. OK, she, <laughs> the, the pen was lethal. The okay. pen was lethal. Okay. So it, I okay. definitely iconic scene. Yes. Iconic. It, it hurt. It hurt. And yes. I know a lot of the critique is surrounding that scene. Uh, a lot of people wanted the happy ending. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people wanted to see them just win. And yeah. I understand that. I understand that critique. But I think I also understand why it took place as well, you know, just that harsh reality. And I think it also poses a question of why um, we have such a we, immortality um, mm -hmm. and how people just go down in history books usually typically have the most violent deaths and like how we associate like iconic and like immortality with just violence. Right. It was an interesting, interesting question for me. Yes. In watching that scene. Yes. Well, get the tissues ready because it's sad, but it's a good one. Yes. So Queen and Slim is a very layered movie, but at its core, it's a beautiful black love letter and I'm a sucker for a complicated love story. And I think this one is for the ages. You just watched a clip from the show that covers the culture like no other. For every episode, I assemble a panel of thinkers, activists, celebs, and outspoken experts to give us their unfiltered opinions on the topics that matter to black America. This is elevated, intelligent, and uncensored discussion, representing every perspective, the conversations we have when we're the only ones in the room. No topic is off limits. We're not afraid to go there, and we do it all live five days a week. Join me here every week day at 4 p.m. Eastern. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us on social media at twitter.com slash Marley Show. It's the Marley Show. There's nothing else like it.